Are you wondering why your hamstrings get so tight and you can't seem to improve with the daily stretching? And in this video, I'm going to explain why hamstring muscles get tight and share my three simple steps to bring a real solution to tight hamstrings. If you want to learn how to retrain your body and then movement safely and then effectively and then move better, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I am Taro Iwamoto. I am a Feldenkrais practitioner with my background in athletic training, physical therapy, martial arts, and the Feldenkrais method. I have helped many people like you overcome and then move beyond the pain and the limitations. Now it's your turn and let's dive in. So why do hamstring muscles get tight in the first place? And I believe in adapting to chair and the couch is the biggest influencing factor. Hamstring muscles that run from your sit bone, uh, your ischium, and down and crosses the knee joint and then attaches to just below the knee. And so as you're standing, right, and then from and changing from a standing to sitting, so the distance from your sit bones to just below the knees and muscles, the distance shortens. So the muscles are in shortened positions in sitting compared to standing. And as we get older, and then most of us and then adapt to the chair, we spend more time sitting in a chair and sitting in a couch. And rather than standing or sitting on the floor. So we spend more time and in the positions that hamstring muscles are shortened. And on top of that, sitting in a couch in a chair, and most people sit with the pelvis rolled backwards, and that further shortens the distance and shortens the hamstring muscles. And you can imagine that, doing this over months and in years, what happens to the muscles? The muscles adapt to the shortened positions, and then they lose the flexibility over time. So now, let me share my three steps and to improve a hamstring flexibility. Step number one, stretch properly. Very common mistake when it comes to hamstring stretching, whether it's done sitting or standing or lying down. So the hamstring muscles, and you've seen people doing this, right? You get a little bit of stretching in the hamstrings, but what's wrong with that is that you have to understand that hamstring muscles that attach to your sit bone crosses the knee joint. So when you're keeping your pelvis in a posterior pelvic tilt, you're keeping that muscles in shortened positions, and then you are rounding your back, and then you're getting a little bit of a stretch in the back, but not as much in hamstrings. So you, if you really want to think about lengthening your hamstrings, what you want to do first is to move and roll the pelvis in forward directions, right? So that your sitting bones is actually going to move, okay? In this directions, and then your pelvis are going to move forward directions. That is moving your sitting bones away from this end, and which is lengthening your hamstrings. And you can feel the difference when you do this stretch, your normal way, maybe this is how you've been stretching. But you notice as you're starting to actually move your pelvis forward directions, and immediately, much more quickly, you will feel the stretch in the hamstrings. And this is really what hamstring stretching should be, and how it should be done. And you can do this one while you're sitting, if you do a lot of disc work, while you're sitting, you take a little break, and then, all right, always think about moving the pelvis forward, rolling the pelvis forward, and then you immediately feel the stretch. And so I'm talking about how you're getting and how you lengthen your hamstrings. Now, I'm not giving you a specific uh, dosage and the time or duration of the stretch or anything like that. I mean, just a general rule, um, 30 seconds to 60 seconds, and you can do many, many times throughout the day. But for me, as far as I'm concerned, it is about retraining how you 
do the stretching, retraining your movement patterns. So don't keep stretching like this way. Now you can start to think about retraining your movement patterns so that you are immediately and starting to lengthen your hamstrings by rolling the pelvis forward. Do this, sitting, standing, same thing, right? So standing, you roll the pelvis forward, you feel the stretch move a lot more quickly. You're lying down on your back maybe, and then you're doing this one, same thing, you, you move your pelvis forward, and then you feel the stretch right away. So this is a big, big, uh, the, uh, the important aspect of how to stretch. And I've seen people make the same mistake of keeping the pelvis in a posterior pelvic tilt and then doing more of a low back stretch rather than a hamstring stretch. Okay, very important. So if you've been doing the stretching, first thing you can change is check how you do the stretch and then starts to move the pelvis forward to lengthen your hamstrings. And number two, apply this stretching into daily functions. And namely, three basic functions. Sitting, right? Assuming you do a lot of sitting. Desk work or just sitting in a couch. So getting used to sitting with the vertical pelvis sitting with the posterior pelvic tilt. As I said, shorten your hamstrings. And you've, your hamstrings have already adapted to that shortened position. So first, train yourself out of that patterns. And then getting used to sitting on your sit bones so that the pelvis is vertical. You don't really have to keep it and stay there for the whole time, but at least in getting more comfortable and finding that vertical sitting position. That in itself is lengthening uh, your hamstring muscles. So as you are training yourself out of the posterior pelvic to two more neutral positions, then gradually you're actually teaching yourself to do this, you know, movement. So bending forward and moving from the pelvis. And that's very important. And then two, uh, the second function is reaching forward directions, right? And if you're sitting or standing, reaching forward, think, leading with the pelvis, right? So the, do the reaching patterns, moving from the pelvis, right? So think about roll, moving the pelvis forward to reach forward. Again, the purpose is retraining the movement pattern so that every movement, the functional movement of reaching you are training and lengthening your hamstrings. And so if you start to do this movement, every time you do the reaching, you're leading with the pelvis. And then you are, you have the opportunity to lengthen your hamstrings every single time. So that's basically, you're doing lots of repetitions of stretching by reaching, right? Which you're probably gonna do a lot by the end of the day. And then the last, um, or the third functional movements, uh, the daily functions that you'll be applying the stretching is bending. You do that a lot, right? Tying your shoes, putting on your shoes, and picking something off the ground. Think about, again, leading with the pelvis, right? Do the reaching, bending, not by doing this, this is the same thing as common mistake and a wrong, uh, the common mistake in this hamstring stretching, keeping the pelvis posterior pelvic tilt and then reaching and bending and stretching. Same thing as you are bending down, leading with the pelvis, okay? It's all about retraining your movement patterns so that you are lengthening hamstrings all day long, right? So this bending patterns, it's not just in sitting. If you're standing, you're bending over to pick something off the ground, same thing. Think how you bend, right? Leading with the pelvis, leading with the pelvis. You feel the stretch in your hamstrings and you notice your pelvis, your ease moving forward rather than keeping it posterior pelvic tilt. That strains your back. So that's why repetitive bending and it strains the back and people hurt their back very often. And as a result of 
poor bending movement pattern. So you are now changing how you bend and so that you are lengthening your hamstrings, stretching your hamstrings every time you bend down, okay? And uh, step three, this is the last one, adapting to floor sitting. I'm a huge uh, fan of sitting on the floor, as you notice, big floor here. And we used to have a couch, but then we moved it up to the second floor. So now we have a big open space and we sit on the floor a lot. And so sitting on the floor, if you're not used to, especially assuming that you have a tight hamstrings and uh, uh, it's not easy. And my guess is that you're not going to be able to keep your pelvis in uh, uh, neutral positions as you sit on the floor because your hamstrings are already tight, okay? In that case, most likely you are going to need maybe a couple uh, pillows, uh, the cushions, to raise, the, your sitting, uh, your, to raise your bottom up, okay? And uh, as you're sitting on the floor, <clears throat> if you're not able to, you, you're basically stuck with the pelvis, uh, the pelvis in a positive pelvic tilt because the hamstrings are so tight, not allowing you to move the pelvis into the uh, neutral positions. Then you need to add the pillow, okay, <laughs> to do that. So try not to go from just sitting on a couch all day to sitting on the floor all day. And just gradually just to train your body to get used to sitting on the floor by using uh, cushions and practice that bending, okay, even sitting on the floor and reaching for something, reaching for a you know, glass of water on the table, coffee table, same thing, remember, reaching, okay? Reaching and bending and uh, bending over, reaching from your pelvis, that strength, uh, the length of your hamstrings. So again, this is a little bit more difficult to do it than sitting in a chair, but over time, as you adapt to the floor and you're allowing your hamstring muscles to get lengthened for longer periods of time. And this takes a time, but over time, the tissues are going to adapt to the demands, the new demands. And, uh, and eventually, the hamstring muscles will lengthen. So please understand these three steps are designed to facilitate optimal tissue loading and to allow the hamstring muscles and the fascia to adapt to the lengthened positions. This takes time, and so don't expect the improvements in just a short period of time, like a week or two weeks or something like that. It will take months and maybe in a year, but I can guarantee you, if you stick to this practice daily, consistently, and you will improve your hamstring flexibility for sure. If you want to improve your back pain, be sure to grab your free movement guide to pain-free back at the link below. Check out these videos, and if you like this video, and hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. Comment below how helpful you found this video was. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy mindful movement. Bye-bye.